All right, hello everyone. Vicki Verley here, Rock and Roll Prophetess, and we're going to take a look at the February 10th uh, eclipse chart in uh, it's at Leo. It's the first eclipse of 2017. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, it's a full moon eclipse, a lunar eclipse. At the, sorry about the noise. I'm trying to clear space out here. 22 degrees of Leo. Well, a lot of stuff here. A lot. Well, first of all. I, look, I looked here, and it's in, uh, there's a grand trine in fire with this eclipse. This thing is making all sorts of aspects. It's making it supposed to uh, Jupiter over here, and then we've got 22 Chiron. But let's look at this grand trine and 22 Vesta down here. Let's look at this grand trine. We've got the full moon, trine Uranus, trine Saturn, all in fire. Well, you know, this Uranus-Saturn thing, it, we've talked about this at length, it's very different energy. Even though it's in a harmonious, um, you know, trine with uh, fire, Saturn is very much the old way and Uranus is the new way. I mean, it's it's almost polar opposites. It's, it, it almost is. Um, and it's interesting that both are rulers of Aquarius, where the Sun is. This is the ancient ruler and this is the new ruler. And they're just so different. Um... But I think what it is, it's bringing the old into the new. It's bringing the old... And Saturn in, in Sag is much, it's much lighter. You know, it's a lighter energy. So it's going to bring, you know, it's going to lighten Saturn up, hopefully. Try to lighten Saturn. B make Saturn... Because um, this is reason. This is the higher mind and reason. So maybe you could appeal to Saturn through the higher mind and reason. And, um, you know... But then there's all this other stuff with, you know, false facts and everything. But anyways, hopefully that would be the highest expression of this. This would be the highest way that this could come out. Um, Leo, let's just focus on the Leo energy. Because this is kind of like a precursor too. Because there's going to be two eclipses in Leo this year. And not only that, the nodes are going to move into Leo. So there's going to be this big influx. This is kind of the precursor, the introductory to get ready, everybody. Here comes the Leo energy. And Leo, the fifth house, is, and it's the sun energy. Fifth house, Leo, sun. It's very lighthearted. It's very, it's a house, it's a, uh, rules over children. It rules over having fun, amusement parks, entertainment, um, basking in the sun, showing your glory, being who, letting your light shine, you know, being on stage, being the entertainer, the performer, um, expressing sun, Expressing yourself to the, your fullest extent. So self-expression. What is that noise? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear. There's some strange noise. What is that noise, Rocco? Sorry about that. He's going to... Rocco will check it out for me. He'll protect me. <laughs> He'll protect me from the strange noise from the Uranus. <laughs> Some kind of technology noise. Hopefully nothing to worry about. Anyways, um, back to this. Um, so anyways, yeah, Leo, it's like, um, it's self-expression. It's joy. It's happiness. It's dancing. It's um, basking in the sun. So I get the, what I want to say about it. It's as if this is the what we need to do to make change. Not be Saturn stuck stuck in our digging our heels in, and the old way is the new way. And but Uranus wants to do everything new, 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 and throw the old out. And you know, it's like come at it with childlike wonder, come at it with joy, come at it with happiness. It being whatever whatever you're trying to do here, it doesn't have to be like the political uh, climate. It could just be whatever you're trying to do. Um, now the full moon. Full moon eclipses is, you know, it's a standard astrology 101. It's going to eclipse something out of your life, you know, yeah. that And that could happen. Um, but also it's illumination. Also it's shining a light. It's the culmination. It's the illumination. So it brings matters to a head. And whether it'll be eclipsed out of your life or not, the next couple of weeks will show as the, it's waning then. You know, that's when the release comes. But the full moon itself is really the culmination. It's the spotlight. I keep coming back to the spotlight. That's what I just keep, the vibe I get out of this, you know. 
uh, being on stage, and it doesn't have to be like you actually being on stage. I know many of you out there are, are into, you know, entertainment and stuff, and that could be a factor. But, you know, being on stage about whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, it's kind of like letting your freak flag fly, be who you really are. Go back to your childhood, and you know, when you were a little kid, and they said, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? What did you say? Chances are that's probably closer to your true, um, your true essence, finding your true essence, finding your, you know, that this is more what this energy is about to me. And then using um, Uranus, the technology and everything that's around in these times, you know, the internet and social media and everything like that, for Saturn to build a new foundation, to build a strong, strong foundation. You know, when I open this chart, Jupiter is really what I, everything, it seemed to me like everything's pointing at Jupiter. And that is sextiling the um, new moon, and then it's, we've got, um, it's squaring Pluto and squaring, uh, there's a cardinal grand cross going on too here with Uranus, Jupiter, Pluto, and Vesta. So, and there's just, uh, there's a lot of energy here at these 20 degree marks. So again, too, if you guys have planets at those spots, and it really, it's the gamut. It's not, you can't just say, well, if you have a 22 Leo or 22 fire or 22 fixed, then you'll be affected. You have 21, 20, in the 20s, you know, you're, you're going to be affected. It's coming, it's every single thing is lining up with that. It's everywhere. So, especially everybody with these, you know, 22, 20 degrees, 23, you know, in, the, in, the, in that range, um, you're going to be affected. And then you look at your regular chart, you'll see how. But let's get a minute to look at this Grand Cross now. You've got Uranus opposed Jupiter, Pluto opposed Vesta. I think I talked about this before, but it's very much the male versus the female, and not necessarily gender, just the typical um, representations of those energies. You know, Capricorn is, is a, the Saturn, the father, Cancer is the mother, the woman, Libra is Venus, the feminine, Mars is Aries, the warrior, the masculine. So these are all squaring off here. You know, really with Uranus, it's getting, it, it's another big thing about Uranus. Now Uranus is in the Grand Cross and Uranus is in the Grand Trine. So Uranus is very, and the Sun is in Aquarius. So Uranus is very prominent in this, prominent energy at this time. You know, with Uranus, it gets away from gender, it really does. You know, Uranus used to be in old uh, astrology when I was learning astrology. If you had Uranus in the 5th or Uranus in the 7th, you know, basically it was saying you might be gay or something, but, you know, in the books it would say, or the teachers would say, sexually deviant. <laughs> You're a sexual deviant. Wah, you evil. You know, let's lock him up and put him away. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Saturn's stance and, you know, Pluto and Capricorn's stance to some degree. But now, of course, there's becoming more and more tolerance for that kind of thing. And it's not deviant, and it's not right or wrong, or it's not, you know, trying to fit into a, um, a square, you know, into a box, fit everybody into a box. Um, and it's beyond, it's beyond, it's fluidity. And it's beyond just sexual uh, tendencies and, and, and uh, gender and, you know, that, everything we associate with uh, sexuality and so, and so on. Um, it's, you know, it's fluidity in everything, you know, in your spiritual beliefs and, you know, you don't have to fall into and believe this religion and all the, you know, following the rules. It's, it's a rule breaker. It's the maverick for sure with Aries and Uranus. You know, we're, gonna, we're breaking the rules. We're, break, we're shattering the rules. We're getting rid of those rules. They, they don't apply to us. Um, excuse me, I need a drink of water. Uh, but anyway, so... That's Uranus, breaking free, breaking out, um, breaking out of those old norms and those old paradigms and those old boxes, and finding your true spirit. That's just what I feel with this Leo energy so strong. It's just finding your true spirit, finding that childlike place within you that, um, you know, that you can express yourself, express your true self, express your heart. You know, that's all fifth house Leo energy. There was something else I was going to say about Uranus, and I'm trying to remember. We were talking about the sexual deviance and, um, and that kind of thing. Um, Uranus and Saturn. I lost it. Sorry, lost it. Uh, 
Well, let me go here next. Let's look at Lilith, because Lilith's at that critical degree of 29 Scorpio. So talk about staying on the topic of, you know, sexuality and defining, you know. Lilith and Scorpio has been a nice, it's been pretty powerful. You know, that women's march, the largest women's march in history occurred while Lilith was in Scorpio. Um... You know, it's cause Scorpio, Lilith and Scorpio has been about the f empowerment of the femi feminine and not sitting back and, you know, letting this patriarchy dictate anything. You know, and it's, I don't want to open a big can of worms about that, you know, about, um, we don't have to get into abortion and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we can get into that about women and about, um, you know, this uh, not allowing standing up to the male patriarchy that wants to rule over you in whatever way. It doesn't have to be about your reproductive health. It can be about whatever. Well, you know, it's, you, get, you go to college, you get married, you know, your life's all laid out for you. And Uranus says, no, my life's not laid out. I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going on uh, next. I keep, there's something else about Uranus that I wanted to, I had a good one. It was something about um, outer space and technology. Mm, I'm sorry, I keep it's like on the tip of my tongue and I just can't grab it. I hate that. <laughs> but anyways, um, so back to this, yeah. So this 29, it's like this critical degree. It's this last blast of Lilith. It's Lilith uh, at 29 Scorpio really coming into her own, really owning her sexuality, really saying, you know, maybe I don't want to be, maybe I want to be a scientist. Maybe I want to um, go to the moon. You know, it's squaring, maybe I want to be, a, you know, on stage. Maybe I want to let my true light shine. Uh, maybe I, I don't want to be married. Maybe, you know, or maybe I want my freedom. You know, so being empowered and being who you really are, too. I mean, that's a big theme of this uh, thing. So we've got this, there's also a square to, um, so we've got a T-square. We have nothing down here. If there was something at 20-something Taurus, that would fill in that square. But we've got a T-square in the fixed signs with Lilith. So there's many, many aspects going on here. I feel like it all comes down to personal expression, personal freedom, expressing your true heart, finding who you really are, casting, you know, breaking free of expectations and constraints. I mean, that really seems to be what it is. All right, now we've got Venus and Mars. They've been traveling together for a while. They were together in Pisces. And now they're together in Aries, five degree orb, so they're still running pretty close together here. So Venus and Mars join together. We're going to be focused on love. Oh, this is love. Mars and Aries, so that's its home sign. That's its home ruler. A lot of drive and ambition. Um, if you, if it's not really about love, Venus and Mars and Aries is like could be a new beginning in love for people for sure. You know, because Aries is a new beginning. It's a new, fresh beginning. Some of you may be getting into relationships with somebody younger than yourself with the Aries. That's the youthful energy, and this is youthful. Or somebody who has children. That could be a, one of the, another thing about it. But Mars and Aries is, I've, I've got a lot of drive and ambition. Venus and Aries is, um, well, that would be, you know, I think you're attractive if you just want to bring it down to the mundane thing, you know. Venus and Aries is like, I like the way you look. I think you look nice. Could be, I mean, maybe it's a good time to, you know, a lot of people are doing diets and whatnot to, you know, get yourself in shape, start exercising, all that stuff. But um, if you are involved in arts and creativity, Venus and Aries is going to give you a lot of drive and ambition to get things done. And it, it to me, it's like the grunt work, you know. So before you want to start painting, you've got to get the canvas stretched out and, you know, maybe put some gesso on it and da 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 You know, then you can get down to the business of the creativity. Or you got to get your workspace set up or you got to get your recording gear hooked up and your wires run, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and fire up the kiln. So that'll give you the inspiration and the um, energy to get, get that stuff going here. So Chiron is also here at 22, trying, uh, we've got a grand trine in water too. We've got a grand trine in water with Chiron, trine Vesta, trine Lilith. So we've already talked a lot about Lilith. And this is, you know, Chiron's all about healing those old wounds. We talk about this practically every time we look at these charts. And, you know, in the sign of Pisces, so it's old and it's the past and... It's ancestral. Let's look at this Venus and uh, this Vesta in uh, Cancer. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water again, excuse me. 
<clears throat> well, um, I think I talked about this this last time. This really reminds me of the traditional role of the female, because Vestal is the Vestal Virgin, and Cancer is the mother and the nurturer and everything like that. So it's trying Lilith in Scorpio, the independent woman, the woman who owns her sexuality, and then it's trying um, Chiron with the past. So I think this is just a big healing. It's it's uniting. It's the holy, tr you know, three is such a, uh, trine is such a magical thing. It's the pyramids. It's in, in, in Catholicism. It's the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, three is a, the Holy Trinity is a thing. You know, it's, it's a, it's a power, it's a foundation. It's a base. It's uniting all these feminine icons, all these feminine archetypes, you know, into Uranus, the new uh, woman for the, the new age, for the 21st century and beyond. Uranus is all about, you know, moving into, you know, um, and not keep staying in this old paradigm, fighting, fighting, fighting. It's unity. It's about unity. Uranus is totally about unity, too. Um, what else we've got? We're still, I'm sorry about that. Uh, get rid of that. We still have Pallas and Neptune in conjunction here. That's a very different vibration as well. You know, Neptune is ultimate Pisces energy. It's the ruler of Pisces. It's uh, imagination and, and um, it's uh, malleable. It's it's water. It's it's um, perception, perceiving, and Pallas is a, sort of akin to Uranus. You know, it's very much uh, new ways. It's kind of so this is a different, this is a different um, kind of energy. It's a very different kind of energy. They're not the same. And it, it could be fighting each other. You know, you could think of it that way. Well, they fight each other. They're not on the same. It's, you know, I don't think Pallas is really comfortable in Pisces. I think, here's what I feel about Pallas and Pisces. Since Pallas is an, an inventor, she fashioned tools and is an inventor. She's a warrior spirit, too, of course. Pallas Athena, Athena, the warrior goddess. Um... But she's also an inventor. And in the sign of Pisces, she could be drawing these um, inventions and pulling them down from the higher, you know, like the collective unconscious and the higher, uh, the higher, deeper realms. It wouldn't just be um, of a mindset. It would be from the soul and from the spirit. I guess you could say that. All right, any big other things that I missed here? Every time I do these things out afterwards, because I don't like to watch other people's, um, I don't watch anybody else's video until I do mine, because I don't want to inadvertently say, you know, quote them or, you know, pick up, I want it to just be my fresh take on it. And then I'll watch somebody else's video and goes, oh, damn, there's that major aspect. I just totally missed it and didn't even talk about it. <laughs> but I like to just be fresh and off the cuff. I don't want to... I don't plan what I say or, you know, anything like that. So, yeah, so I think I covered the, bi the big basis here. It's a f it's an eclipse, so it's powerful. Its effects last for six months until we roll into August where we're going to have the second uh, eclipses. So, yeah, it is a releasing. Things could be eclipsed out of your life, but it's also enlightening and it shines a light on. And I think it's going to shine a light on people finding their true path, finding, you know... And not so much, well, i got to be a part of this because they're fighting for this and this and this and fighting. More like, um, who am I? What do I love? What do I love? What, light, what makes me shine? What makes me happy? What brings joy to my heart? And that would, those are the things that you need to be focusing on. And that's the thing that's going to be... Um, uniting for you, uh, for all of us. It's not just about the grand trine and feminine, because we all have a feminine in, within us. That's, again, with that Uranus, you know, being deviant is, you know, not, um, and it's not even just in your sexuality, you know. It's like not letting little boys play with dolls, or girls play with trucks and cars and stuff. Or like junior high, I remember, you know, being forced to take cooking and sewing which I already knew how to cook. You know? <laughs> I was cooking for my whole family for years already by that time. And um, 
I would, it would have been better for me. I, would, I really wanted to take wood shop, but girls were not allowed to take wood shop. But why don't the girls take an automo a basic automotive class? That would have been a, a hell of a lot more useful to me in my life than um, taking, learning how to bake a cake in cooking class. You know. <laughs> yeah. So trying to force um, this old way of trying to force people into gender roles and. Um, it, it goes beyond gender roles, even even just family things, you know. Well, our family's always been bankers, so I have to go into the family business of banking. Or in my case, Bart, you know. <laughs> you're going to be, a, you're going to run a bar, you know, and that was the last thing I wanted to do, too. So, let your light shine. Be who you really want to be, you know. Be who you were born to be. And keys to that may rely, <clears throat> you know, in your childhood. Okay, everybody. Oh, my voice is starting to go, so that's a sign it's time to wrap this up. <laughs> Get one last drink of water. So if you want to find out more about me, head up to that eye in the sky, that little eye up in the upper right-hand corner, and take you to my website, <clears throat> where you can find all sorts of things. I do readings. I have uh, astrology mandalas that I do. They're really beautiful works of art on your own astrology chart if you're into astrology. Um, a bunch of astrology reports. Just go and have books, all sorts of stuff. So take a look. If you're into love readings, it's February and um, we are coming up on Valentine's Day. I do have the uh, lots of love readings on Vimeo for $2 and some change. So you can find all that information out as well, either in the little eye in the sky or below the video. So here it is, full moon eclipse. Eclipse season is underway, everybody. Thanks for watching. Remember you're a love and beauty incarnate. Thanks for donating, liking, sharing, commenting, everything you do that makes these videos free. Have a great eclipse. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.